Jay, what do you think about luxury brands using scarcity as a marketing tactic? Um, I think it's smart. Um, supply and demand it goes back to the beginning of business. Supply and demand, you know, you have um, a huge supply, you know, um, demand is low a lot of times. You know, when everybody can get something, it's, it's not a novelty, you know, that's even relationships. Everybody can have something or someone, you know, people want the person or the thing that they can't have. And so, um, we're talking about what we did on the blog today, talking about Ferrari. They had a beautiful article about how they, you know, they use scarcity. Um, the pandemic and them happen to be a little scarce to help them out. It's helping them even more. And a lot, we see a lot of um, luxury brands using that tactic from Ferrari to Louis Vuitton to, you know, uh, Rolls Royce. You know, all these, they, they understand that, you know, if you're only going to make 10,000 cars a year, a lot of people are going to fight to get it. You have lines, you know, people have, they create waiting lists. You know, it's creating a demand for something. Then... Also, exclusivity comes into into play when you start dealing with scarcity um, in that space. When you know that nobody's going to have the same dress that you have on in your city because there's only one large, one small, one extra small, and there's only one Neiman Marcus, you know, in that town, and they bought it from there, you know, uh, there's a good chance that you don't have, you'll pay more money to know that nobody at the ball is going to have the same thing you have. Same as, you know, talking about the Ferrari piece, you know, um, they, they have a situation where nobody in that town is going to have the same car you have. And that, that creates a, um, you know, a good feeling for individuals. They feel exclusive. They feel that's real VIP treatment. So I think it's a great business tactic. Uh, I one that a lot of people don't use enough of. Do you think that also ties into them really knowing their customer and their values? Definitely. Definitely. Um, I think that with them, they're dictating who they want their customer to be. You know, because, and the reason why I can say that is because it doesn't mean just because you had $200,000 or $300,000, you can just go buy a Ferrari, especially not a brand new Ferrari. You can probably buy a used Ferrari, from a, a different dealer, but to go and buy a Ferrari from the actual Ferrari dealership or from a Ferrari, like it don't matter how much money you have, you know, um, because they start to, you guys still get on a wait list. Now you got to start to know people. You have to go ahead and put your bid in. You have to do that type of thing. You have to order a year or two in advance sometime. And so that means a person might have the money so you can win the lottery today. It doesn't automatically start to, that means, you know, put you in a position where you can go get a brand new Ferrari from Italy. It doesn't work that way, you know, and that levels the playing field. It's not about that. You actually got to put in the work. <laughs> you have to, you know, get to know them. They have to get to know you. You you know, um, that's, that's really having control of your market or your market share. And companies like that have control of it. They dictate who they want to sell their products to. And also who they don't who they don't want to do business with. So um, when you're in that situation, you you you're really doing you're doing it. Then you know you have your company where you want it to be. Do you think uh, small and medium sized businesses um, don't utilize that because they're afraid that they won't see the customer traffic that they're used to? Well, you can't do that with everything. So you know we get it. Every business is not set up for that. But small and medium sized businesses can take. Um, some pointers from these major brands like a Ferrari, like Louis Vuitton, like these people, when it comes to, you know, valuing your product or service, you know, a lot of people don't think about putting a lot into your product or service on the front end so that on the back end, you can get these type of results. You know, a lot of people are coming out just trying to get to the marketplace and get some money. But if you're trying to put enough in to make sure that you have the best of the best that you can do every time and you continue to invest and reinvest into your business or your product to, to make it better and better and better, 
then you start to you know, you start to see it change from anybody who walk in your store, anybody who give you business to you can actually decide where you want to do business at. And they'll just say, okay, the, the waters are kind of parked for you. But you have to do what they do. Ferrari's not who they are just because um, they just got a nice car. There's a lot of cars that look nice, but it's what they put into the car. It's what they invest in the car. They, they're they not making uh, um, you know, 10, 10 million cars a year. They're making 10,000 a year. So the Six Sigma um, that they put to you know the um, design of the car and the manufacturing of the car takes it to a whole nother level and they want to get paid and compensated for that. So sometimes you might not want to make so much of everything. You might not want to offer so many of everything. One or two might do. You know what I'm saying? So think about that when you're going out there and you're starting a service or you're starting a brand, you um, putting out a product. Maybe offer just two services. Don't try to do everything that somebody asked for. So be okay with saying, we only do this and this, not those other five things. Same thing with what you're selling. Maybe you only, everybody might come to you and say, well, you should sell the green one, the yellow one, the blue one. Just say, look, I only sell black and red. And that might be, you might see how you create that situation. You know, so that's what I would tell people. And that's what I, you know, I've learned that in business. You know, sometimes less is more. And, you know, a lot of times it's what you get a chance to see when you see quality brands like Ferrari, they understand that less is more.